The news media is lying to you. When I saw the news that U.S. strike kills Iran-backed militia leader in Baghdad, I got very excited because we all know that the American news media is completely nonpartisan and will present facts in an even, impartial manner from one president to the next. Here's from Politico. U.S. drone strike kills senior Iran-backed militia leader in Baghdad. Here's the Washington Post. U.S. strike kills militia leader in Baghdad. You notice the Washington Post is very sneaky, and they don't mention Iran at all. They know that comparisons will be made. That's right, four years ago, Donald Trump ordered the strike against Iran General Soleimani, who was illegally in Baghdad planning attacks on U.S. soldiers there. The news media personalized this decision as Donald Trump against the civilized world. Skepticism mounts over evidence of imminent threat that Trump says justified Soleimani killing, said CNN on January 6, 2020. What's exciting to me is we get to compare how the news media covers this week's strike ordered by Joe Biden. You'll notice they make no mention of Joe Biden's decision-making at all. It almost makes you wonder if Joe Biden even ordered this attack. Let's take a look at the impartial coverage of MSNBC and see how they covered both strikes. In a statement released just moments ago, the U.S. military says that an airstrike by the U.S. has killed a commander belonging to an Iranian-backed militia group believed to be responsible for strikes against forces in the Middle East. The U.S. military says that there are no indications of civilian casualties at this time. They add, quote, we will not hesitate to hold responsible all those who threaten our forces' safety. Joining us now, NBC News Chief International Correspondent Keir Simmons in Erbil, Iraq, and National Security and Global Affairs reporter Dan DeLuce for us at the Pentagon. Dan, what more do we know? Well, this is a what they're calling a unilateral strike. The U.S. Central Command says that they have taken out the commander of Kaitab Hezbollah, this Iranian-backed militia that has been blamed for many attacks, dozens of attacks, on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. And as you said, they uh, believe at this point there were no civilian casualties or collateral damage. And they, uh, of course, uh, say that they will continue to take these strikes as necessary to, as they say, protect forces in Iraq and Syria. And then, of course, there was that lethal attack that killed three American troops in Jordan. So this is part of this reprisal campaign, uh, which is continuing. And of course, they're trying to calibrate it so that they do not trigger some wider conflict. Kier, what more can you tell us from Iraq, from Syria? Sure. I mean, you know, this group is uh, one of many Iranian-backed militia. It, um, it is uh, under a umbrella uh, group uh, here in I Iraq, and and it uh, has been. These groups have been continuing to carry out attacks on bases sporadically, even since uh, that that U.S. those U.S. strikes on well, now just uh, last Friday. So there's. You know, th this is uh, one of uh, many groups uh, that are backed by uh, the Iranians. They have uh, some uh, autonomy, but, but ultimately the U.S. clearly holding them responsible for what happened at Tower 22. Dan, what more can you add? No, I think the problem is here, the challenge is going to be, does this actually deter and halt these attacks uh, from these Iranian-backed groups? So even if they do uh, succeed in killing uh, this commander or other leaders of these militia groups, does that mean that these attacks on U.S. forces stop? And it's just too early to say, but it's a, a very difficult challenge uh, because there are years of this kind of thing going on. Iran uses these proxies to sort of exert influence and create huge headaches for its adversaries. So it's truly to say how effective this will be over time. And again, I think the administration is really putting its chips on the idea of diplomacy, that they can help forge a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, and that will reduce tensions, and that will sort of uh, 
take away this, stop this cycle, this escalatory cycle we're in right now. The threat represented by Iranian-backed militias is one that you lived with, one that you know very well. Take me through your thinking on um, whatever calculation had to have been made and, and what the intel picture had to have looked like for Donald Trump to make a decision that his two predecessors passed on. Uh, it can keep going higher. You, you, you peaked my, my, my ears went up when you said it's odd. What's odd about it? Because taking a, a former senior intelligence official said to me, this is not the kind of snake where you cut off the head and the snake dies. Is, is what's odd to you the fact that an imminent attack would, not, would be carried out whether Soleimani is alive or dead? Is that your point? Uh, the, the capabilities are there. They've been there for a long time. Groups like Khatib Hezbollah, again, have not attacked us really since 2011. They started launching rockets again uh, in October of last year with quiet diplomacy with the Iraqis uh, to try to buy us some time. General McCaffrey, um, if you take Brett's analysis that if there were attacks planned by Soleimani, alive or dead, those attacks represent potentially an even graver threat without their leader there and with the, the passions of trying to avenge his death. There were rumblings that guests at Mar-a-Lago seemed to know something big was on the way. But a week ago, a week ago tonight, would anyone at the White House have guessed or told you that we'd be where we are now? No, absolutely not. And I think that the strike uh, early Friday morning against Soleimani came as a huge surprise to a number of White House officials, even National Security Council officials. And what was fascinating to me was that the people who were in the loop were largely, uh, you know, Mar-a-Lago members had some sort of hint maybe something was happening. Uh, Trump family members hinted at it on Twitter. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham was told. And so it seemed like initially it was largely uh, Trump's allies and people who he felt like were loyal to him that were informed, whereas, you know, key congressional leaders, this was a surprise to them. And I think that what we're going to see this week as Congress returns to Washington from the holiday break, I think we're going to see more and more congressional leaders clamoring for a sense of why the president decided to do this strike now, why the timing uh, was it for, and what was the justification at this point? Notice the contrast here with the political headline they were showing four years ago. Trump awaits Iranian retaliation as White House security tightens. It's all about Trump. It's not about a foreign policy objective. It's not about the needs of the country or protecting U.S. troops. Politico doesn't care about U.S. troops when it's Donald Trump as president. Now look at the political headline from this week. U.S. drone strike kills senior Iran-backed militia leader in Baghdad. There's no mention of President Biden. No speculation about Biden being a crazy nut. Nothing about Biden's judgment. Nothing about Biden's state of mind. It's all professional and everything's on the level. Gotta hand it to Politico. They know how to protect the Democratic Party. Day 1078 of the Trump administration and tonight, this president is facing rapidly increasing pressure both at home and overseas. While the president has been spending his last few days at his resort in Florida, his administration has been preparing for impeachment trial in the Senate. But it turns out the Trump White House has also been working on a military strike against a prominent Iranian leader. The Defense Department tonight has confirmed that the United States has killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Where are we on this? And well, as you know, I mean, Soleimani was not a head of state, and the Church Commission you... really mainly applied to head of states. But the, the, the important thing here, Chris, is the wisdom of this choice, uh, and also the, the crazy shifting explanations, uh, imminent, not imminent, four embassies, one embassy, no embassy. It truly strains credulity. Um, and whatever the intelligence indicates, I think we know from members of Congress uh, who received the briefings that they really had no case for imminence. Across from the White House, anti-war protesters sending a clear message to U.S. President Donald Trump, do not go to war with Iran. Similar protests in cities throughout the country as Americans worry about escalating threats following Thursday night's U.S. airstrike that killed Iran's top military leader. We'll do anything to stop the Trump administration escalating this into a, a full-blown a full war. On December 31st, Donald Trump said his dream was for peace, specifically in the Middle East. And then on January 2nd, he did this. Our breaking news tonight is huge. A rocket attack on the Baghdad airport kills Iran's most revered military leader 
and a senior official in Iraq's paramilitary forces. Now, the Pentagon announced tonight that the attack was a U.S. airstrike. Sweet Jesus. Donald Trump ordered the killing of Iran's top general. What happened to peace, huh? When most people break their resolutions, they eat ice cream. I don't think we'll be getting any report from The Daily Show anytime soon on how Joe Biden is personally responsible for destabilizing the Middle East with this strike in Baghdad against an Iran-backed militia leader. Everything in the political realm, including comedy, must be directed towards the needs of the Democratic Party. Thank you.